Thank you very much, gentlemen. Um, yeah, I'm really stoked to speak with all of you today. And yeah, let's dive in. Um, so we have obviously we have a few questions. So the first question will be for Dan. Can you share with us what inspired you to create Chain Guardians? Was there a particular experience or idea that sparkled the creation of the platform? Yeah, yeah sure. I, I won't take uh, credit for creating Chain Guardians, or I might get immediately fired. Uh, but what I can say is, uh, essentially, Chain Guardians is a is a blockchain digital ecosystem uh, that combines collectibles, gaming, and the metaverse. And when you talk about inspiration, we've actually been around since around 2020. Yet our founders, the formation of the founders, was much earlier than that, in kind of 2017. Uh, these guys kind of met when they were playing this kind of crappy old super early Web3 game, right? So I guess Chain Guardians was born out of, uh, I guess, what every business is born out of. Uh, those guys meeting at that time and saying, can we do this better? So the inspiration, I think, uh, was, was seeing what was available and like, this, this can't be it. And kind of putting the heads together to create kind of uh, Chain Guardians and coming up with the Guardians, which are the blockchain superheroes, you know, the defenders of blockchain, right? So... Um, yeah, that's, I guess the inspiration was, was kind of born out of necessity. Someone needed to step up and create something uh, better. I don't understand. Uh, thank you very much for clarification and, uh, about it. But I'm also curious, with so many base, uh, blockchain-based games in the market, what's really sets Chain Guardians apart from the rest? Uh, maybe Adam and Idol, can you share some unique features that Chain Guardians offers to players? Uh, sorry, guys, I, I forgot to unmute my microphone there. Um, yeah, so I mean, Chain Guardians has been around for a little while now. Um, we've got quite a lot of uh, nuances to the ecosystem. We are not just um, an NFT company we have a rpg game in which we can stake nfts to play um, we've got a mining platform as well in which you can um, stake those nfts to earn um, lucrative rewards through the ecosystem um, we've also got a um, staking platform in order to um, uh, stake your um, cgg in order to earn um, new exciting characters that we create in in the ecosystem as well um, and on top of that you know there's a few other pillars to chain guardians um, obviously, we've got the Cryptoverse and we've also got Chain Boost, which is our um, DeFi launch pad as well. So there's quite a lot of um, things um, going on in Chain Guardians, not purely just um, the game. This is exciting. Thank you very much. Um, maybe all of you, could you walk us through the gameplay mechanics of Chain Guardians and how players can acquire and upgrade their Guardians? Um, Are there any I, new gameplay? Can I just go back on that? I think just just for adding to Adam's uh, sure, sure, Adam, apologies Adam for that. There as well, yeah. I think something that really differentiates Chain Guardians from everyone else is, I guess, the idea of the Guardians themselves, the blockchain superheroes. You know, so the Guardians and the Chain Guardians uh, are almost like a conduit for learning about and getting into blockchain and Web three. They're kind of like your friendly neighborhood superheroes, you know, that not only teach you about each chain and each Web3 application, but also are designed, you know, by one of the, one of the world's best, you know, kind of anime artists out there who, you know, previously worked for Disney and Marvel. So to give you an example of how that works is whenever we make a Guardian, let's take a recent example like, you know, Apex, who we work with, um, we've worked with ApeSwap to do so, uh, we'll often partner with ApeSwap and collaborate with them and create a really cool campaign around that company. And that means our community get to learn all about ApeSwap and, and, and then people get to learn about how different applications of blockchain work. So I think um, thinking of Guardians as kind of a, a conduit towards um, everyone learning about sort of Web3 and blockchain and, and Web3 gaming is a, is a really good USP that I don't think anyone else is doing, um, you know, we, we kind of try to strive to be the, the marvel of blockchain, and we do that through these these superhero characters, which you can go check out on our website. Exactly, I can agree with hundred percent with you as well. Uh, the amount of uh, you know play to end games I've seen on the Web three and blockchain space, 
the chain garden so definitely strikes to be different and definitely I can't wait to see what you know uh, the future holds for you guys so um, I'm definitely agree with this um but yeah g- g- could you walk us through the gameplay mechanics of chain guardians and how players can acquire and upgrade their guardians are there any new gameplay mechanics or updates that you know the players can look forward to in, into the future oh yeah for sure uh just to go on the second part another update that we have is we're also releasing a tournament mode that's supposed to go live next week uh for all the players of chain guardians Coming back to the game itself, like Adam said, we have uh, multiple aspects to it. There's the RPG, that's the role-play game, and then there's the mining game as well. For the RPG itself, if you own an, if you own a Chain Guardians NFT, which you can, um, e- there's multiple ways of acquiring. You can buy it on the open market. You, there, we also have some staking characters, like the one Dan just talked about, Apex. He's one of our staking characters who's going live tomorrow. You can also earn him by staking CGG and being able to earn an NFT itself. So acquiring the NFT, you can either buy it, you can earn it through staking, and you can play it and you can use it in-game to play. And on the NFT mining platform, what we have done is each NFT, each Chain Guardian NFT has a hash rate associated to it. So you can stake up to nine NFTs together and be able to mine tokens uh, on blockchain. So every 20 minutes, we release a block, and there's some tokens associated with it. There's rewards based on that. The higher hash rate you have, the higher the probability of you mining that block and earning those tokens, as in, as in a general Bitcoin mining would happen. Uh, that's an internal platform. For the RPG, the NFT then gives you an in-game playable character, which you can level up, um, you can, there's unique skills. Each NFT has special moves, each NFT has different skill sets. And you can level them up by playing inside the game. Currently, NFTs go from level 1 to level 80 uh, with two different limit breaks. You, the higher you level up, you go up to 40, you can limit break, get to 60 and 80. And the metadata of these NFTs is retained. So if you level up your NFTs and you do wish to transfer them or sell them at, to somebody else, then, you know, you could start off with the level one. And unique features wise uh, inside the game, we have the single player mode, which is the campaign or the story mode. There is currently three plus campaigns to play from, which has more than nine worlds each. So there's already 27 worlds you can go and fighting, fighting about. There's the PvP, where you can go and battle against your friends. There's the raid boss mode, where you come together as a community and fight a single enemy. And then right now, what we're releasing next week is the tournament mode. So essentially, you would be able to participate along with your friends and your peers in tournament. And, well, as the name suggests, it's a tournament, so there will be leaderboard rewards and progress rewards along with it. That's awesome to hear. I actually love the fact that you mentioned that, you know, there is a multiple ways of uh, acquiring the Guardian. And it's really good to hear, uh, especially when there's a lot of people from different backgrounds and different communities. And it's really great to hear. And if anyone from listeners are not joined or join the Chain Guardians Discord or their community, please do, do so. And make sure you follow them on Twitter for more updates. But, but I mean, I'm, re- I'm really glad to hear there's multiple ways. There's, there's lots to do in the game and so much pro- process to do. Um, before we move on, is just, there any... Well, just one more way of acquiring it is, you know, Dan loves to give out NFTs in his, in his marketing campaigns. So, yeah, he's your best friend if you want one for free. <laughs> well, I'll, I will definitely keep an eye on it. Then. <laughs> <laughs> And just to add to a little to what Muradil was saying, you know, we we do try and do quite a lot of events as well um, throughout the year. So there are like multiple ways to kind of, you know, win prizes and be a part of the community and, and um, yeah, get, get rewards through, through that aspect as well. But um, there are definitely some really good improvements that we're wanting to add to the RPG over the, the uh, coming year. Um, 
uh, one one of which will be um, at the moment in the game you can um, earn these lieutenants, um, which are randomised characters. Um, you can get them through daily summons. Um, and what we're going to do is um, give users the ability to um, rank these uh, units up and fuse them in order to create an on-chain uh, lieutenant through them as well. So there are a lot of like really cool mechanisms that we're going to be adding throughout the course of the year in order to help like um, both free-to-play model, but also like a premium model as well, um, like what Myrtle was saying before with the, the tournament mode, etc. So a lot of really cool stuff upcoming. Right. Uh, absolutely love to hear that. Um, so yeah, everyone who's hearing this, please make sure you join community, join the events, and enjoy the game. Um, but obviously, as the Jane Gardens have to offer a lot, could you guys explain the difference between Chain Guardians, Cryptoverse, and Chainverse? How are these games connected, and what can players expect from each game? Um, yeah, sure. Um, so, well, we've obviously got a lot going on. Just reading them all out in a row uh, tells you that. Um, so, Chain Guardians is kind of the ecosystem that holds it all together. But then we've also got the Chain Guardians, the RPG game that. Uh, you know, Adam and Riddle just just talked about this is our you know flagship uh, blockchain RPG where you play the game with your NFT characters and your animal worlds and you have some fun. Um, Cryptoverse is kind of it's been going about a year now. This is our photorealistic Unreal Fi- Unreal Engine Five you know next generation metaverse. What we like to say it's the metaverse that you dreamed about when you were growing up, and I think it was definitely born out of that Ready Player. One, if anyone's seen that film, you know, that's kind of like the look they're going for. It's a like hyper realist, realistic, um, and they've got this, these really good kind of uh, the founder is, is kind of a visionary, um, and he really believes in decentralization as of all blockchain. So it's really been built from the ground up with kind of player ownership at, at the heart of it. We recently held the first play test of the cryptoverse, um, so we've we let people in to our metaverse. And the feedback was really positive. Everyone loved it. They were like, this is, you know, unlike, you know, if you think about the other ones out there, Sandbox, uh, Decentraland, et cetera, they're obviously doing really good work. But ours, the way ours is different is that it's, you know, it's next generation. It kind of, if you buy a handbag in Decentraland, or, you know, it kind of looks like a couple of, you know, pixels, but you buy a handbag in, in Cryptoverse and it, it looks like the real thing, right? So um, it's, it's, Go check it out, cryptoverse.vip. Have a look at some of the footage for yourself. Um, Chainverse is our new layer two chain built on Oasis. This is our own chain. And essentially, we're building up a library of games on top of it, working with third-party partners and collaborators. Um, and we've already released Chain Arena on here, which is our mobile game, uh, and Chain Guardians as well, which is our FPS game. Um, I guess at the heart of, of Chain Guardians uh, are the Guardians themselves, you know, the NFTs, uh, the NFTs kind of sit in the middle of all this and kind of the NFTs kind of have utility, you know, across the whole stack as well. So we're trying to build everything outwards from the NFTs really sitting in the center um, to make sure that they have the most utility across all of our portfolio of, of products as well. Well, I think, and yeah, uh, as we mentioned, NFTs and art, I absolutely love it. As a big fan myself of anime and the games that, that represent this, I absolutely love it. It's really, it really looks good. And every single day, I'm just opening the website and checking the MTs and just kind of, I'm just super surprised how, how good they are. And it's definitely worth and for other projects to learn from and how to create a proper NFTs. Um, before we move on, any more team members would like to add anything on top? No, I think Dan uh, outlined that really well. Okay, thank you very much. But, but I have one question for you guys before just we move on. Between all you three, so what's, which, which of the three of the verses are your favorite ones? Your personal favorite? I was waiting for Dan to go first, but I guess uh, <laughs> he's not going to. I'll, I'll say Chain Guardians because... Um, you know, when I joined the company, um, I, I was quite new to blockchain um, a couple of years ago now. Um, and I think getting immersed into the, the law, the story, the, the different guardians and the vision that 
the founders had for the company, it really kind of got me invested into um, into what we're doing. Um, so I definitely say Chain Guardians, and, and but but I do in a way love all the products that we're creating, um, especially like uh, the Cryptoverse, um, because you know I've had a lot of involvement in that as well in terms of um, the website and uh, the land selector tool and everything. So you know, but but I, I do think I, Chain Guardians for me is like my ultimate kind of passion i guess in in the company so then um, would you like to add yeah sure so i'm gonna be impartial i think I, I, you know i like them all equally you know like um my imaginary children i think they're all i think they're all uh, pretty good they're all pretty innovative in their own way they're all quite um they're all very uh different and try to achieve different things so i i I think they're all fantastic. Chain Guardians obviously uh, leading the way in blockchain gaming and, and, and Cryptoverse is obviously leading the way in the Metaverse as well. The thing that I like personally about both of them, like in particular, is that it's not always about the technology, right? And I think in this industry, in blockchain and Web3, you often get people just talking about tech all the time. And, you know, as gamers, as people that like to have fun, we're not really in it for the tech. We're in it for like what, what we get out of the tech and why, you know, ultimately what the benefit is and why it's fun so you know as a marketeer what i really try to work with the team on is uh, we're trying to essentially make all these fun so you know cryptoverse might be the best technically metaverse out there and chain guidance might be the best like game out there but actually ultimately it's all about fun and having a good time with the community with the game and coming back for more so for me they're both really fun and that's what i love about them Love it. Riddle, would you like to add? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think I think I'll second with I'll second with Dan on this one. It's it's really just hard to argue which one is the best out of these. But I guess personally, uh, I'd probably say Chain Guardians. It's probably because of the story behind it and you know how the RPG was one of the first products of Chain Guardians and with all the nfts we have like you said with apex uh it was it was it came from a campaign with a partner project that's the same concept we've had with most of our guardians like bitsy represents the bitcoin world uh seth represents the ethereum world lolita is litecoin and so on so essentially it's like it's 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 a game where where, you know, each of these chain characters, the guardians of each of these chains, they're fighting against the gatekeepers, which is the central financial industry in a way you can imagine. Uh, you know, we're promoting blockchain. So, yeah, I'd say chain guardians, probably. And then Cryptoverse, well, it's our own metaverse. And then how we were talking about guardians for each of the chain. And then Chainverse is our own chain itself. It's our it's our own L2. So it's uh, it's pretty... It's yeah, I'm pretty impartial to them, but yeah, uh, the game aspect is definitely more fun. <laughs> I agree. I uh, love all three as well, and the listeners as well. If you let us know in the comments which of one of the three you love the most as well and why. Um, but yeah, as we start talking about NFTs, and you know, it's really been a hot topic in gaming industry. How do you see the role of NFTs involving in the gaming industry industry, and what potential benefits do they offer to the players and developers alike? Who wants to go on this one? I'll go first. Then. Um, so, good question. Um, so, we're doing our best to make, as I said a bit earlier, that the NFT is the center of our universe, right? And we're trying to give the NFTs as much utility as possible within that universe. You know, I think NFTs without utility, you have a bit of a challenge. You know, this is where you get people kind of kicking off of their picket boards and, you know, shouting scam. So when, when we know, obviously, we've got a, a large team of, I don't know, off the top of my head, probably 50 people working at Chain Guardians, brilliant artists, programmers, you know, across the board, bringing these NFTs to life. So uh, I really think... Um, as leaders in the space, it's our responsibility to kind of make NFTs, give them as much utility as possible. And as I mentioned earlier, always talk about the benefits 
uh, of what it brings rather than the tech behind it. My hope is that NFT will eventually become like MP3, you know, kind of like a forgotten word that everyone kind of remembers, but now they're just thinking about what it does rather than like what it is. Very true. Yeah. I, I mean, just to kind of add to Dan's point as well, it, I mean, for us, what we really try and focus on is, is trying to make things gamified and fun which is really hard to do sometimes, but you have to be really creative and think of, you know, fun, creative campaigns that you can do in order to drive that fun aspect. So we do kind of lean on the community quite a lot when it comes to that. Um, and especially with NFTs, there's a lot, like Dan was saying, in terms of like benefit and utility that you can bring to them. So it kind of opens up this Pandora's box of, you know, what you can do with your imagination. Um, for instance, we've just released this new kind of um, NFT called Rage NFT, which is a non-transferable nft but you kind of get them through participation in our events that we we do throughout the year um and it's this fun kind of um you know proof of att attendance um, nft that you can get for taking part in the events and being an active community member and there are some really cool things coming um around the rage nfts which will add a lot of benefit and utility to users who are actively taking part in our community because ultimately, you know, that's what we want. We want to create something really fun and exciting and uh, NFTs are like the vehicle to uh, do that for us, really. Yeah, just adding on top of it, I mean, envisioning just how NFTs evolve in the gaming industry, I think they're definitely here to stay. It's, it's essentially what the definition of NFT is, right? It's a non-fungible token. It talks about ownership. So it's essentially, you know, uh, how you play, play any game, even on Steam. You could buy assets. They're linked to your account. And if you're, you lose your account, that's pretty much it. Uh, the ownership of that asset is not verifiable on chain. Owning an NFT you're, is, you know, you will essentially always be the owner of that. Uh, it, that, that NFT is going to be staying on, on blockchain. Gaming industry-wise, right now, we even have Sony filing for a patent for NFTs. So, I mean, down the line, you might even see them coming around on PlayStation. So, yeah, it's definitely coming around. The potential benefits it adds to the player, well, number one is ownership. Number two is transferring that ownership is a lot easier. Uh, it eliminates the middle the middle player, eliminates the internal mic, the scam route potentially over there. And for developers, it's essentially, it's, it's, it's the same. I mean, if you have an in-game character, you could, uh, let's say you have an in-game character on, on a normal game. The day that server for that gaming project goes down, then you've lost access to all of it. But NFTs, well, they're going to deliver, they're going to deliver as long as even a single node is there to host the blockchain. So yeah, that's not going anytime soon. I do. I do agree. And I also love the fact that you guys mentioned that you try to put the community at first and try to reward them as much as possible and giving different rewards that they could use in the team, the ecosystem. So it's really glad to hear. Um, but yeah, let's talk about probably the most important thing, which is the security. Um, it's always a concern in gaming industry and especially with the rise of blockchain based games. Could you guys uh, explain us what steps is Chain Guardian taking to ensure the security and integrity of its platform and NFT assets traded on it. Yeah, I'll try not to get too technical and geeky about stuff, but um, you know, we do take security really seriously. Um, we make sure that all our smart contracts are audited um, by by Certic. So we, you know, we 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 want to make sure that everything that we put out there uh, that you know the um users have kind of peace of mind that we've done our due diligence and we've done everything we can to make sure that you know the um the contracts are audited um you know on top of that you know we we do um uh, do a lot of uh, stuff regarding encryption and security um you know we make sure that we uh, from a technical side use a combination of cold storage and hard hardware wallets uh, you know we we do everything every step that we can in order to ensure that um you know, um, the users are kind of safe on our platform. Um, and in the past, you know, we have done small bug bounty uh, programs to like help incentivize, you know, any disclosure of any security issues that ever kind of crop up. So, yeah, we, we do everything we can and we, we have, you know, regular audits in order to 
to um, to ensure that everything's you know secure. And just to add on to that, uh, platform-wise, we've also had pen testers in the past trying to ex um, examine and exploit vulnerabilities, if any found. So yeah, we've had a, you know we've had a proper run through with even pen testers and testing, making sure that the website and the platform is secure. Yeah, and even just to piggyback on on what Murdo was saying there, uh, in the RPG. Um one of the major tasks that we we've been working on over the past three four months is making sure that um everything in the rpg is, is moved from the client to the back end um making sure that when we do kind of turn on these um earning opportunities through the tournament that we've done everything we can to to you know in, ensure that um the data is protected and safe so um yeah we've we've done a lot of uh, a lot of work on that regard. Glad to hear that. And uh, yeah, I'd like, I'd like you guys mentioned, you, you've done pretty much everything what I'm, I'm here so far. Um, so yeah, I'm really pleased to hear that you took him really seriously uh, towards your platform. Um, but can you share any upcoming features or updates that players can look forward to in the near future? Uh, or maybe some long-term goals for the platform that, that, that the community are not aware of? or um, I guess we can mention a few things that haven't like been fully signed off yet. So, you know, it could be subject to change, but I might as well kind of, you know, give some kind of leaks. But, um, yeah, I mean, what one major thing that we're trying to do in the RPG is add new worlds and new sub-worlds. So as kind of Dan and Riddle said earlier that, you know, um, law and story is really a pivotal point in what we do at Chain Guardian. So we want to like find new mechanisms in order to tell that story. And the RPG is a perfect kind of platform to do that. So adding new worlds kind of consistently and sub-worlds as well, which um, just to kind of put into context, these sub-worlds will be more like story-driven around new characters. So you can imagine one sub-world would, would potentially be about Bitsy and her backstory and how she came to be like the leader of the Chain Guardians. So there's a lot of really cool stuff that we're wanting to like implement over the coming year in order to like make that achievable. And there's other like really fun features that we want to add in that I don't know if I can really share at this moment in time, but you can imagine like, you know, um, guilds and, and, and that type of thing and other gameplay mechanisms in order to, you know, earn rewards through other than just the tournament mode. So there's a few things there that, you know, people might be excited about. Um, uh, yeah, I suppose I'll just sort of, I won't say piggyback because we've said that a lot. <laughs> I'll piggyback off the back of that, Adam, I will. Um, obviously, Adam's mentioned you know, the tournament mode chain gauntlet. And, uh, you know, personally, I think this is one of the most exciting additions to uh, chain guardians in, in a long time. Um, essentially, this is our, you know, you've got the, you've got the web two model of seasons, right? With like Overwatch and you've got Fortnite, Rocket League, where, you know, you, you'll earn a, a sort of Call of Duty or you'll earn new skins, new music, new assets, whatever. The more you play, the better you are. We're kind of bringing that to Web3 uh, with the same kind of concept where you have this period of time, this season, this tournament where you can, the more you play, you're going to kind of earn on-chain rewards for playing. So you, you kind of got that um, real, real incentive to keep playing. And, and the only way you kind of earn those rewards, the on-chain rewards, is by having one of our NFTs as well. So it kind of all ties together quite nicely, you know, so uh, you can kind of, it's kind of like, you know, we don't like to use play to earn too much anymore because it's a bit of a, you know, dodgy word in, in the industry now. But this is a real sustainable way of actually um, kind of doing something like this in the seasonal approach. At the start of each season, each tournament, we can put some rewards up, you know, kind of based on uh, what revenue we've made, perhaps, and NFT sales, things like that, and partnerships and collaborations and sponsorships. Then people can kind of know up from what it is they're going to earn over from us in this particular mode of the game. So. Uh, we also have a, like many of these sort of Web2 uh, games, we've got a real lore-based campaign around Chain Gaunt as well. So there'll be a storyline that goes on throughout Chain, uh, throughout, uh, Chain Gaunt at the first tournament that you can follow along uh, and try and 
a real focused story that you can get involved in the narrative as well. So Chain Gauntlet for me is going to be a real game changer and hopefully something people will enjoy. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> that's really, really a lot of sneak peeks and really, really good updates. And I can't wait to test it myself. Um, but yeah, I'll speak, is, while we speak about updates, and I want to touch on the partnerships or collaboration that you guys have formed with other companies or platforms within the blockchain and gaming industries. How have these partnerships impacted the growth and development of Chain Guardians? Yeah, um, I guess just to begin off with, you know, like, like we said, for each NFT, uh, we have a, each a, each NFT character we release or the Guardian that comes from a major chain collaboration. Essentially, uh, you know, collaborations with chains such as like the recent one Dan was just talking about, which is the Apex character coming into staking that is from the ApeSwap um, platform. Then we have Irene, which is with the Elrond network. Uh, we have Himalayan with the Avalanche network. So with each major chain, uh, we essentially have a NFT character for themselves. And it also ex adds on exposure to the chains uh, themselves. Like with Polygon, um, which was the, uh, the character we have is Matic, which was the initial name of the chain before they rebranded. So like with Matic, not only do we have an NFT character on there, we also have our native token, uh, CGG, which is now available across chains. It's a multi-chain token at the moment. So we also moved over liquidity and there's an NFT, there is a token bridge available. You can, you can use CGG on ETH, on BSC, on Polygon. And there's more plans coming along, uh, which I won't release because uh, that probably qualifies as a leak at the moment. But um, yeah, so with each of these, each of these major chains that partner in, uh, it adds on to the it adds on to the community, it adds on to the tokenomics, to the token economy, to the NFT base, and yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure Dan wants to add on onto that. Um, thanks, Bruno. Uh, I think you've probably covered a lot of it, to be honest with you there, but, you know, Chain Guardians is, is kind of built on the idea of collaboration, right? So, you know, uh, I guess, like you said, for each of our kind of library of anime inspired characters, you've got a chain or a company or a platform kind of sitting behind it. So, you know, Aaron is, you know, Elrond or Multiverse X now. Binancio is for, for Binance, Bitsy for Bitcoin. So, I guess that, I guess one of the original kind of, uh, reasons for Chain Guardians was to make all of these collaborations and make it easier to understand this industry, right? So kind of what I uh, talked about before, you know, the foundation of the company is kind of spreading the word of Web3 uh, through these collaborations. Indeed, indeed, it does. Uh, thank you very much for, for, your, for your answers. Um, to the players and supporters of Chain Guardians, uh, obviously in community, what message do you have for them? And what do you think, how important is community feedback and participation in shaping the future of the platform? Uh, feel free to share your thoughts. Um, yeah, I, I think super important. Um, you know, we always try and take all the uh, criticisms and all the praise very seriously, you know, and we try to kind of be... Um, you know, we, we, we do look um, inward about, you know, what we can do to improve things all the time. You know, we take a lot of community feedback, you know, on board. You know, even some, you know, we get messages daily about the RPG and, hey, can you add this feature? Can you add that feature? And, you know, and we, we kind of look at it and we say, actually, can we can we implement this in a, a really quick time frame? And then we, we, we do try and implement it. Um, we've got, like, two features, I think, coming out next week, which are actually community um, voice like um, kind of um, yeah features that they wanted in there um, but yeah I think the community will definitely shape Chain Guardians and it, it does at the moment um, we are trying through the DAO in order to you know give more and more freedom to the community which is you know it, it's uh, a very you have to run a, a very interesting dance between the two making sure that you know the vision that 
um, we as a team have kind of and, and the vision that the community has is you know taken into consideration as well so um, yeah we, we're just really excited to kind of you know be building this community up and, and actually you know taking things you know really seriously and, and um, making sure that you know we do really good work you know and that's like one like key point that we really try to do it's like make sure that everything we release is something that we're really proud of um especially like this year i can i just know like in the team that we've got we've really ramped up that kind of quality and, and made sure that everything that we do put out there like people can be excited and, and like happy about so yeah Absolutely. And just to add on to all of that, I mean, we definitely do take the community very seriously. And I mean, not to blow our own trumpets, but I've been in the space for about seven to eight years now. And just based on the amount of projects that I've seen, Chain Guardians is one of the very few who are extremely engaged uh, within their community. I mean, Everybody is approachable. You could go and talk to the CMO. You could go and talk to the COO. You could talk to any member of the team directly as if you were having a one-on-one -on -one conversation, which is not something you see any typically in, in project in, you know, a lot of projects in the space. About 90% of those are just, you know, where you have a CM team, which is out giving out robotic answers which I also pride about at the moment. Uh, we have an absolutely amazing CM team. They make everybody feel like they're at home. And anybody from the community is always open to sending out a message. You know, uh, their feedback is always received. If Even if it's criticism, it's not, it doesn't turn out to be a fight. You know, we're all, we're always building, we're always improving. Uh, and yeah, we're always open for dialogues. Um, yeah, I don't have much more to add on that, to be honest with you. Not that you asked anyway, but I'll, I'll add either way. I think, um, so we, we, we recently did a little survey and, uh, and I, we've been doing a lot of, we've, we like to take customer feedback and try to implement it into our plans, right? So we've, we've put this initiative together recently where we're just trying, we're talking to the VIPs in our space, letting people voice their concerns and tell us what they like, what they don't like, and try to kind of map out the future based on that, right? That's what it's all about um, at the end of the day, what the community want. Um, but one of the things that really stood out for us in, in the service that we've done, everyone I've spoke to is like, one of the things that people love about us most is that community, right? And just echoing what Riddle said there is people just love being in our Discord, you know, that's and our Telegram groups. And that's because of the great CMs. And like you say, everyone's really approachable. So I think when you think about unique selling points, like ultimately is a really cool place to hang out in our Discord. So, and we are trying to make it alongside the game, alongside the games and the properties that we release, different products, we try to make them as good as possible, like Adam said. We're also really, really working super hard to make just being part of this kind of dream team community just as fun as possible as well. So, you know, people will know, uh, listen to this, if, if they're part of it, they'll see a, a kind of big step up in kind of just, I guess, innovative community initiatives that we're, we're putting on you know immersive campaigns that we try to get people involved in you know endless prizes everyone gives away endless prizes right but we want to just don't want to give away prizes for the sake of it you know we're, we're trying to have fun with people when they do it so they don't just come here just to lap up free nfts which they get but actually more about like okay i'm having a, a, a fun time here this is emotionally quite a good place to be everyone's really cool um some people, not Adam Riddle, but other people are anyway. Uh, and yeah, it's just a great place to be. Very rude, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That, no, that, that was ab absolutely, ab absolutely bang on answer that I was expect to hear uh, from you guys. And yeah, it's absolutely a pleasure to hear this. That, you know, you're really concentrating on community and the feedback and you, you know, treating them as equal to, your, to yourself uh, in this matter. Um, but yeah, um, I know you guys gave a lot of updates, a lot of sneak peeks, um, but before we go in for the community questions, is there anything else that you might forgot or you would like to update us on Chain Guardians about events, maybe releases, or what, and what the players should keep their eyes out for? Um, yeah, um, thanks. Yeah, just before I forget, um, obviously we've got the Dawn of the Guardians tournament starting 
um, next week. So people should check that out and sign up on chainguardians.io and, and get a part of it because there's great on-chain rewards that you can play and it'll be a really good time. There's also, uh, we've also released our latest kind of Guardian character. We don't release that many, probably like one or two a year at the moment. Um, that's currently uh, for sale in a kind of a Dutch auction. So you kind of pay for it what you want, right? The, the, the price kind of just keeps reducing and reducing until you're happy with the price. That's really good research for us as well and seeing kind of what, what prices people want to pay for NFTs, right? We're not just putting a big fat price on it. We're saying, hey, pay for it what you want, <laughs> right? So I think that's another cool thing that we're doing. Um, we're, also, we're also doing a really quite, I don't know if this is a leak, it probably is, but we're doing a really uh, interesting and fun, immersive Easter campaign that kind of begins tomorrow. So if anyone is around tomorrow, then you know, log on to chainguardians.io, uh, join the Discord because there'll be a surprise waiting for you. That sounds ominous, like you're going to get murdered or something. But it's not that, it's not scary. It's like, it's a good prize. So join us uh, tomorrow for our Easter campaign um, where you'll be able to win lots of cool stuff. Again, just making it fun first and foremost. So check that out. That's, that's all I've got to add on what's coming up. Anyone from the team would like to add anything? Um, we've <laughs> we just released <laughs> a new staking character today, actually. Um, the Apex character that Dan mentioned for ApeSwap. Um, so he's accessible through the staking platform. We've added some really cool new features to staking as well. Um, giving people um, the option to figure out how much rewards that they earn through staking by this reward calculator that we've created. Um, we've also, uh, yeah, we've released a new staking uh, 2.0 contract as well, which has a few new kind of updates to it too. So that's really cool. Um, in terms of other, I mean, there's always stuff going on in the background. There's something that I'm working on at the moment, which is really cool addition to the mining platform which um, I don't want to say too much about at the moment, but it, it's kind of maybe another little game mode to it. So that might be quite fun coming up. <laughs> <laughs> that is really, um, like, really mis- a lot of mystery in that one, Adam. <laughs> I know. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It's good. <laughs> yeah, I'm, def- I'm definitely curious about tomorrow. And if anyone interesting as well, please make sure you join uh, Chain Guardians Discord. And wait for the surprise, I think. <laughs> um, but as the guy said, uh, it's going to be really fun and you can win lots of cool prizes. Um, Riddle, would you like to add anything? No, I think uh, I think they pretty much covered it. You know, Adam's Adam's pretty infamous for his leaks. So uh, <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll let him leak it all. <laughs> I, I Don's probably more famous than me for, for leaks, you know. <laughs> they are Understood. accidental they're usually accidental leaks so guys aren't they <laughs> that is true they're not purposely trying to kind of you know ruin ruin everything <laughs> and, actually like one of the ways that we do these kind of easter campaigns we do other campaigns that we do we don't even tell everyone in the team that we're doing them like we, we try and like just keep them between a small inner circle so everybody is surprised you know just so we don't leak out some amazing campaigns that we're going to do right so we try and keep them as um secret as possible sometimes to make sure they don't get leaked oh yeah it's like a sneak peek or like a sneaky peek and surprise after <laughs> sneaky peek surprise exactly <laughs> um all right um if you guys don't mind there is there is a few uh, questions from the community from the discord um so the first question would be from vladimir is uh, first, you must register, reg- register your team with one of you say before April 5th. What is the time limit to register to be re- rewarded? Um, I, th- I think um, so. The, the time limit is the 5th, yeah. So anyone that purchases a, is an Uta after today but has her in, in their team won't get the reward. What, what, uh, that, what Vladimir is talking about essentially is that with our Uta sale that we, we have on right now, we, we incentivize people to have Uta in their squad for the opening Chain Gauntlet tournament, right? And if you have her in your squad, you're going to get a share of um, a thousand dollars $1, worth of Oasis tokens. So it's kind of like an extra benefit for buying Uta early. So if you buy Uta after today, you won't receive that benefit. 
But there are some more UTA benefits coming out. Again, that that's a leak, but um, we'll be in, we'll be pushing out some new UTA um, kind of reward incentives for the second half of the sale. Okay, another leak for today. It's a bit too much, but <laughs> let's move on. Um, uh, there is another question based on UTA. Uh, if you have two or more Yuta in your team, will you be rewarded for each one or only for one? Um, so I guess I already covered that part. But yeah, so if you have two or more Utas in your team, you will be rewarded for both of them. Conditionally that you do have them in your team build up for the tournament mode. So if you own two Utas, but you only have one of them in your team buildup, then you're only eligible for one. And if you have both of them in your team buildup, then you're eligible for double the rewards. Understood. Thank you very much for that. Um, about the RPG, now we have less less worlds than the older version and only four planet shows on the main. Uh, are the planning have more planets worlds in the future that include the new NFT lore? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we want to add in new worlds and new subworlds. Um, you know, like I mentioned before, the subworlds will be uh, primarily centered around um, each character. So you can imagine a subworld for, for Bitsy um, and showing like kind of her, her lore um, her origin um, and then we can do that for each character and I think that gives a lot of flexibility for people in order to see uh, some of the characters some of their kind of skill set and their moves in the game as well That's awesome to hear um, I can't see any more questions um, maybe from listeners there is there is anyone who want to ask a team a question can't see anything on Twitter comments as well. No. Uh, I'm back okay, well, I that being... I can see a question from Reminiscent in the, um, in, in the Discord. Adam, I don't know if you want to answer that. I'm just, um, I'm just uh, putting that one on you. Reminiscence asking uh, if there's plan to use our CG NFTs in a in maybe a MOBA type game. I actually don't know the answer to that question. Um, I know that from discussions about the cryptoverse that they will be available in the cryptoverse um, as characters. So there's one opportunity there. Yeah, just trying to scroll all through the community, but anymore? No, I can't see anymore. Right, well, that being said, um, I'm re- I want to really say f- massive thank you for you guys to come in and join us today for, for MA Space today. Um, really, we appreciate your insights, your sneak peeks, and especially can't wait for tomorrow. Um, Easter surprise. So if anyone listening to this, um, please make sure you join uh, Jane Gardens community on Discord and Telegram. And make sure you follow them on, on, tw- on Twitter for latest updates. Um, and yes, I'm really, I'm really, really hope so that we see you all in the world of Jane Guardians really soon. Thank you very much, guys. And thank you very much for listeners. Bye, guys. Thank, thank you. Cheers, Cheers guys. Bye all, have a nice day.